Okay, we're making a new playlist and it's called the Pleasure Hunter playlist. And we're just going to talk about shadow healing, healing your shadow, patting your shadow on the back, <laughs> and just really embracing your true self, your whole self, not just the parts of you that we shine to other people. I'm going to take that as um I don't need those cards because I'm doing this new thing cuz usually I'm pretty stubborn when I do tarot reading when I is it for myself in particular. Um <laughs> the only time I'll I'll keep seeing the same cards over and over again and the only time I'll actually listen to it is if they fly on the ground. But I'm actually trying to really work on my intuition and just trusting myself more. I know that, that sounds crazy because it's like, well, I mean, didn't you already? Uh, yeah, but you know, we could always improve. And I just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely try a new technique, which is more of like less or less hesitation and more just getting right to it. So you would. You would expect me to shuffle these cards faster, wouldn't you, if we're trying to get right to it? But, uh, yeah. Anyway, so the Pleasure Seeker series, maybe this sounds vague, but to be honest, we really f seek and find a lot of pleasure with our shadow and, and in not giving our shadow grief and actually embracing who we are and, you know, the, the darker elements of ourself. <laughs> what is dark anyway? honestly but uh yeah look at this <laughs> come home to self come home to yourself dearest one you've been gone so long wandering far outside of yourself looking for something someone to lighten your load to feed you clothe you tell you just how many years they've waited for you to journey their way how tired your feet grow how heavy your heart and yet you still wander <clears throat> but if you get uh, quiet and still in meditation, you hear me calling from inside your ribcage, calling from deep within your ears and at the bottom of your belly, whispering, I'm right here and I have everything I need, telling you to stop searching out there, to come home to yourself. Really, like, being in tune with your shadow is really going to help you be much more in tune with who you really are and not who you pretend to be. And, you know, as sour, as salty, or unbelieving, you may hear that phrase. <laughs> like, we really have this part of us, whether, you know, if you dive into, like, astrology, I, you know, I'm not an astrologist. I'm not an expert. But your sun sign is who you portray yourself. And I've thought about that because it's actually pretty true because it's kind of like more my, com my competitive nature actually comes from being a show off in my Virgo state <laughs> and less so much of just the, you know, the actual achievement. I know that sounds, it you know, take it as it is. I do like, you know, figuring things out on my own. Don't get me wrong, but I know that the competitive side has a little bit more of a, I just want to be better at something than somebody else is <laughs> and you know and that's not who I always am you know I'm I'm actually usually pretty chill even when I'm competitive I'm usually just trying to compete with myself and improve myself or there's these aspects of me that I shine my Virgo through more when it's like comes to organization and just getting work done and being like the person who like delegates things. So at the same time, my Taurus moon is, is kind of more of you're like, you're, you're rising, your moon, your sun, all of these things are very important because they're like your main personality. This, this is this is my lesson in astrology. Hopefully it improves over the years, but this is my only lesson in astrology. And that your moon sign is more of who you actually are, like within when you're by yourself, when you're doing things on your own. Even the things even the elements that you don't actually see about yourself could be um, shining from your moon sign. And then the rising sign, I think, has a little bit more to do with your actual personality, your likes and dislikes. But don't, <clears throat> don't quote me on that. Uh, 
I almost want to see what these cards are just for fun. But yeah, no, it's too many anyway. And really finding yourself within your shadow is really going to bring you into like a deeper understanding of your wounds and being able to actually heal some of your child trauma. But then it also helps you, it helps you get back more in tune with who you are presently so you can be happier and fulfill like your needs and desires by like through creativity, activities, outdoors, activities, you know, just things, doing things that bring you pleasure, um, exploring your sexuality, and just all uh, working through magic. Alchemy is really fun. Let's be real. It's pretty cool to understand how the universe communicates and how you can communicate and correspond with it through herbs, affirmations, magic, numbers, geometria, languages, you know? It's pretty cool. Okay. Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. <laughs> A place, I love that Pleasure Dome. I feel like I use that all the time. The sensual, <laughs> sensual exploration of your longings, desires, and drives. Body and soul. Did I not just say all this? Use the pleasure oracle cards for divination, journaling prompts, self-love, conversation starters, creative inspiration, or calls to action. They're warm, flexible. May this deck bring you... I think that was just a welcoming card. How does this keep getting in this deck? I've done that before. I swear it was in my last video. Anyway. Yeah, that was just the welcoming card. And just really being in tune with, like, you know, what you actually enjoy. Because we think... We go through hobbies and stuff. I don't know about y'all, but I go through a lot of hobbies. And then I, I'm pretty passionate about something for, like, quite a while. And then I come back, and then I'm just kind of getting bored of it. Um, I want I'm probably not doing it to, like, make money or be creative. Well, that creative. Or, like, well, maybe I'm being creative, but, like, I'm just not being that passionate about it. Because it's not something that I can see myself doing for a long time. So really understanding who you are through your shadow helps you really understand the real boundaries, the real expectations, the real limits, and just where you can actually go with what you enjoy. Whether you're trying to make money doing it or you're just trying to do it for leisure, pleasure, whatever activities, you know. It's, it brings you joy, and it's, it's healthy to explore those things. The darkness is your friend. Disassociation is a learned phenomenon as much as it is a personal coping strategy. Most of us, by default, have our head in the clouds or on our phones. We act as if our minds aren't connecting to our bodies, as if they're distinct. Through grounding back into our bodies every day as needed, we realize the power combined and there's so much pleasure to be found in this place. To feel the pull of gravity on our bodies and their weight against the earth, to notice our breath and heart rate change with our thoughts, to feel the aliveness of our vessels and know that we're fully resourced, that is joy embodied. Grounding yourself, coming home to yourself. It's really important because... Being comfortable in exploration is, is also pretty key and vital because you, you you just, you need to, you need to be understanding that you're exploring some darker sides of yourself and sometimes that can be pretty triggering whether you believe that you're ready for it or you're not actually ready for it but you believe you're ready for it, you know. Like those things can actually bring up more pain and, and a lot of us kind of get really shy or shut away from healing because it triggers that part of us so just understanding that this exploration can be a tricky process it really can so under through that understanding allows you to you know when to pause um like you can have the yellow lights for slowing down 
and processing and then just red light when you're just not ready for something you need to backtrack or just pause stop and just you know continue with something later because healing again it's very tricky and whether you're doing it through meditation um therapy sessions whether that be online or in person with somebody and then hallucinogens that's a very un very big one and just understanding like more about your body and your mind and being really honest with yourself is very important because if you really want to to really get through it like you can't tell yourself you're ready for something when you know that you're not actually ready for something or that you don't actually feel ready for something I mean yeah you can always push your limits but at the same time it's just better to be honest with yourself because you don't want to you know you don't want to get a salty taste or resentment or something because it didn't go as planned or you were triggered by something and kind of had like, you know, a breakdown moment, you know? There's a lot of things that could happen. I'm not trying to scare you either. I'm just trying to be reasonable and honest. The power of no. See this as well. This is all about boundaries. We believe, we believe that we don't always have to we believe that we have the power to say no, but then when something actually happens, we back out of our nose. And so we need to learn like real boundaries. So the power of no, a person who values themselves as much as anyone else, who knows their innate worth, is a person with a sovereign sense of boundaries. Their moral compass points in all directions. They don't cross another person's boundary and they don't tolerate theirs being crossed. This is no easy thing for us, for those of us trained to be okay with being stepped on. See? Action. What are your romantic non-negotiables, your sensual no-nos, your communication must-haves? Write an exhaustive list. Don't stop exploring until you know exactly what you will and won't tolerate when it comes to boundaries. Dig them up like precious stones, then hold them dear. Don't let anyone swipe them. So important. These three things are like key. They're vital. They're vital to exploring your shadow, especially if you are actually going to involve other people. Um, because, you know, there's a lot of like romantic, but also very, um, I sh there's a better way to say this. Um, hmm. Intimate details that we may want to or end up sharing with a spouse or a partner or whatever and um yeah it's like you, you have to understand i'm not saying you you know you shouldn't communicate these things because yeah you should communicate these things but you also have to be ready for that and understand when somebody else the other party is not actually ready for or something because maybe they're on a different path or they're just not equipped or wired or it's just not in their interest to go down that healing path and may just not understand the things that you understand so it's also really important um, when involving other people when exploring your shadow because it's not about the fun and the exhilaration yeah that's very important but you can also become really um, rather addicted to the sensations and the thrill of exploring your shadow versus what it truly inspires and brings into your life, which is healing, pleasure, and balance and joy. There's not so many ups, super highs, and super lows. Yeah, you can explore that too, but it's more of a, a balance within yourself when you actually start exploring these things. So this is just a door, a gateway into really exploring more about yourself. So I hope it gives you um, a nice and 
curiosity or <laughs> a nice and <laughs> maybe curious uh, hope for exploring your shadow because it's really it's 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 gonna be interesting because everyone's shadow is different everyone behaves different everyone responds different and it's a beautiful and intricate process so you know dive deep watch a lot of videos read a lot of books and use your own creativity to inspire more to come out of you um, you know, don't do just the basic work, the basic meditations, the basic grounding, the basic journaling. Like, get deep with it. It's you exploring yourself. Nobody else has to even be a part of this. You can just write it down for yourself, lock it away somewhere. Like, nobody even has to be involved in any, any of this. It's your healing. It's, it's your thoughts, ideas, concepts, like you can, you can make this completely private and not involve anybody. So, you know, I'm just putting that out there. Dive deep within yourself and pull some things out of yourself that you may not have normally faced before because it can help you really understand a lot more about the world and you in the world. Huh. I hope that made sense. I'm almost certain it made sense. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was just another <clears throat> basic layout for diving into shadow work. This is shadow work for beginners, but this is also a, a pleasure center. We're doing pleasure <laughs> exploration. This is going to open a lot of doors to your shadow and, and just bring a lot of light to things about yourself that you may have known or had ideas about but never really fully truly explored so it's gonna be fun it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be dark and grim and then it's gonna be happy sexy sensual romantic exhilarating so i hope you enjoyed today's video and of course even if you didn't Hit that like and subscribe button because it really helps me out. And I love you guys. Bye.